This is Puck Year, New Zealand's hockey podcast with hosts Logan Swinkles and Joe Jury, bringing you the best stories and interviews from down under. Yo, welcome back to Puck Year, part two of how we survived 2020 and then looking ahead mainly to 2021 as well because we need to put that uh, shit show of a year behind us. Uh, If you guys haven't seen it already, go check out Death to 2020 on Netflix. It's a really hilarious piss take on that year with a great, great cast. Oh my God. Have you seen it, Joe? I have, yeah. It's a Charlie Brooker um show uh very very funny it's very good if you good. like satire yeah this is right up your alley uh and it's not that long either i think it's like a like a 50 minute kind of thing or an hour um not too long very digestible uh and you'll be probably laughing your ass off like i am uh, especially when you had the dude from silicon valley which is that's one of the main things I th- think I did last year was I binge watched the entire um, series run of Silicon Valley. And I think it's one of my favorite shows of all time now. I love the writing. It's very clever. But anyway, yeah. we'll get into more of that later. Um, as one thing you'll see from our Instagram profile is along with hockey, we like to talk a little bit about uh, pop culture and, and gaming because that's just uh, who we are. Um, that's the things we love. But before we get into um, our interview with Ken Green, I just want to give him a little shout out because he sent me from his house. Oh, it's a good beer. In uh, Waikato, New Zealand to me in Sydney, Australia, a six pack of the Puck Bunny Pilsner. This is a very special drop that um, I sound like a connoisseur, a drop of beer. Uh, is a, It's a partnership that he did. Um, with a local brewing company, which I'm sure you can you can say a little bit more about. Joe, you're a bit more in tune with that. What beers are on offer uh, in the hockey house? So they've got the uh, they got the Puck Bunny Pilsner, which is a good drop. A kind of if you like your your lagers, your Pilsner drinks, that side of thing. If you're a bit more into the more grunty side of things, um, they got the Toothless Goon IPA, which is <laughs> blow your face off kind of good and then there's also a red a red draft red uh ipa i think which is the the russian one which is um hmm. vadim's little baby yeah um but they're even they're thinking of brewing even more beers um i'd like to see kind of a uh, a cider maybe come out of them would be quite good a nice cider or a something a little fruity yeah hmm I like Maybe that. Maybe a sour. Yeah, and it's cider or sour. Or, um, I mean, any, any, I drink a lot of beer, so I don't really care. <laughs> any, anything. You put this the beer a- in beer, Lee Cocky, that's for sure. Yeah, um, Spitting Chicklets have got their uh, Pink Whitney, and we've got our Puck Bunny Pilsner. That's right. Um, absolutely love this stuff. I had it for New Year's. Made me feel a little bit closer to home, which was great. I really appreciate that. Um, that's honestly just the kind of guy that Cam Green is. He gives a lot of time, money, effort, everything to really grow hockey in New Zealand. Sit back, enjoy this interview because the man loves to talk, but it's a ton of fun and we'll we'll catch you back afterwards. Coming back to the podcast is again, friend of the show, Cam Green. I feel like back in the day, you would be mentioned on almost every episode, either by Joe or myself. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. It's so nice to see a friendly face again. Yeah, I kind of feel like we've grown up together, buddy. It's good to see you again. How you been? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, things are, I guess, getting better here in Australia, but... We'll see how things go. Uh, of course, the uh, main topic of this week's podcast, it's our first podcast of the year, is surviving 2020 with little or no hockey. Um, no in some parts of the world. Little, well, actually, I had none in Australia. Let's be fair, I didn't get any hockey, which really, really sucked. Um, but the you and the hockey house, you weren't really all that affected by uh, New Zealand's lockdown. Can you, um, you know, those few months, how did that all play out from your point of view? Well, really, like for for us, it was like I hate to say that we've been lucky, but we've been lucky. 
scheduling wise, it, it really didn't put too much damage into us. But the thing that, that we did was we actually, um, we had actually gone on our last, our very first trip with the traveling goons over to Australia. And that's kind of when we all started hearing rumblings about COVID. Mm. And then within a month, like, it was the topic every night when you show up to the rink, everybody's like, are we still going to play? Are we still going to play? Like the NBA shut down and then the NHL shut down. And I'm like, we're like this little league in New Zealand. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, do I need to make a statement here? Or what's going on? And then uh, it just came to a point where that was the safest thing to do for everybody that was involved. Um, so we agreed to, as a league, um, to, to shut down prior to the finals, but not cancel it altogether. Um, keep it as a postponement to see maybe if we could get it done. Um, and then we were, we were able to actually finish our season in, I believe may. Um, and fortunately for us, um, it gave us a lot of time to like grow as a community. And like, we even did like a virtual online thing where we created all the players for all the teams and did a virtual series <laughs> to try to keep guys minds occupied and then uh and then we got to play and it was the most perfect scenario ever there was, both finals started they both went to game five we streamed the whole thing um and at one point like even though there was 20 people in the arena we were having we had like a thousand people watch game five of the bhl final which was pretty cool now yeah, that's that's awesome numbers man so obviously the response to having those uh finals live streamed was huge uh, i imagine part of that is of course everyone was so starved for hockey and so when new zealand was able to come back i think we must have been if not the first one of the first um are you keen to do more of that in the future uh, am I keen to do more of the streaming? Absolutely, but it, it's a team effort, and uh, and like I can't I can't thank all the guys within the hockey house enough. Like for like I can only come up with an idea, but it takes a lot of people to um, to pitch in, and and that's kind of why the BHL is what it is, and the hockey house is what it is because it's just guys helping each other. So I would definitely love to do it. I think it's great. I think that um, especially come the finals, I think it's some of the best hockey that you can put in new zealand like i would mm. i would put it right up there with the nzihl um and especially when it comes to the competitiveness and when you're in a five game series so it, it's fun hockey to watch um i would love to see if i could up the game though and do it a little bit better with a couple more angles maybe mic up some of the guys and make it a little <laughs> bit more interactive because <laughs> why not right yeah i mean, I mean knowing <laughs> you cam for the like years that i have i know you're a big ideas man and when those ideas come, they usually come to fruition. So uh, I would love to see something like that. Now you mentioned, you know, you talk about the NZHL, of course, they were affected a lot more by uh, New Zealand's lockdown and by COVID than uh, say the hockey house, where the whole schedule got thrown out the window, you know, traveling between the North and South Island, uh, financially impossible under those kind of circumstances. Of course, hockey house is all um, within Auckland. You travel from outside of Auckland to get up there which is like an amazing uh, effort on your part alone that you have that much passion and commitment. So that's that's awesome from you, dude. But uh, so instead of having like, you know, a full NZHL season, they had that showdown series. You had the two Auckland teams, the, the uh, Admirals and the Swarm squ uh, squaring off. Now, I understand that you had a few players plucked from the BHL to play that series. So what, what do you think that says about the quality of uh, the play coming from the BHL and the development coming out of the hockey house. Yeah, well, I think I think at the end of the day, a lot of these guys that are playing in the NZIHL, a lot of the the Auckland based guys, a lot of them play here in the in the BHL, and they're playing the same amount of games that they're playing, and they're playing among the same players and against the same players that they're that they're going to be playing against in the NZIHL. It's just there's no contact involved. There's no no open ice hitting. You can play hockey, but it's the same, so it's the same type of mentality. And for these guys, in the summertime, it's their kickback, relax, and there's not really as much as that competitive spirit, which you need in the NZIHL. There's the rivalries that are there already, and and I think it was it was a testament to some of the guys, like you mentioned earlier about Andy Hay. Andy Hay played alongside um, plays alongside a couple of the guys that we were talking about that got pulled up so you got like logan gilliard and uh 
Josh Whitston Lee. Josh Whitston Lee just started in the league uh, maybe three years ago or two years ago in the FHL and steadily went FHL, BHL. And then next thing you know, guy goes down for the swarm in the showdown series. I, I believe it may, it might have been Andy. Did Andy get hurt? Somebody, somebody big got hurt in that, in that series and they plucked both him and Logan to come up. And Logan's a Canadian guy who's been on, on a BHL team for the last four years. And uh, so it's cool to see those guys uh, jump in and be a part of it. And for us as the hockey house, it's awesome because we had guys filming it. Like even you were helping us out, getting some of the connections right on the stream. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, we're all doing this off of passion. We don't really make anything off it or, or get too much like accolades other than walk, getting to share the game with everybody else. But um, yeah, it's it's always fun to be involved with the NZIHL. It is the top league in the country. So it's um it's fun for the hockey house to be a part of it and we'll continue to be if so. This year when the when the league was canceled, um it was a real big bummer because it was going to be the first time that actually the hockey house was going to take care of both in-house and online for both Auckland based teams. So that was a bit of a letdown so we got a little kick at the can there. Um in the showdown series and hopefully we did a good job i don't know <laughs> well um i'm sure you did i uh, would have loved to have been there in person to experience it myself but hopefully in 2021 when the nzhl comes back with a full season uh we'll get more of that hockey house experience um you got the goons the traveling goons flag behind you you mentioned them before it's got to be i have to say probably my favorite name for a hockey team ever i think it's just so perfect <laughs> Um, can, can you explain, like, what is the idea behind creating that team? And I mean, obviously traveling goons. So the, the key word there is traveling. What lies in the future for the team? Well, the future, like everybody is uncertain right now. Uh, the future for us is, um, it's going to be traveling around our own backyard, so to speak. Um, we have, a. Is starting in January at the end of this month, uh, the 29th to 31st, we're sending a team down to compete in the Queenstown Cup with Colin McIntosh and uh, <laughs> the good the good boys down there running the rink. They're uh, keeping the ice in for the summer, um, so we want to do everything we can to try to support them and support our local rinks. Um, and then the whole idea was just myself and uh, and Gary Goodall Gaza. We're uh, as you do on a Thursday night, uh, you might be outside somewhere, uh, with a, with a puck bunny in your hand or something. And, uh, <laughs> we're as most good chats start. And we were just like, man, we're getting too old for this league, man. It's getting too good. Like I'm going to get broken soon. I was like, we need to go see some cool shit. <laughs> just sit on a beach and play two, three games. That's it. And then we came up with this idea, like, okay, let's put a team together that travels as a part of the league, we'll just throw it out there. Whoever wants to join any of the trips can put up their hand and away we go. And uh, Ozzy was our first excursion, um, which was a blast. And then we followed that up with five days later, we went to the Dunedin uh, NZ Kiwi Masters or NZ Masters games. Yeah. And uh, and we got silver. So we're like, all right, well, we got second in two <laughs> Doing tournaments. Doing all right there. Yeah, we're, we've been the bridesmaid twice, so who knows? So this year we got four set up. Um, we're going, first we go to Queenstown um, for the Queenstown Cup on the 29th. Then at the beginning of uh, March, we'll be playing against those uh, Wellington Seals probably in the background there, I see. We're taking, <laughs> uh, we're taking two teams to the NZ Kiwi Masters in, uh, in Dunedin at the beginning of March. Uh, we got a team competing in the A and the B division. And the interesting thing about that tournament is that the it's a master's tournament, but in the A division, NZIHL players are allowed as long as they're 30. <laughs> so, Casey. Casey. Yeah, so we got we, well, we got a few guys. We got Wani coming down on that team. We got nice. uh we got a, we got a couple of the boys, so it'll 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 be a good good time down there. That's a good crew, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's well we got and and you know, Log, like if we're gonna go away, right? So we got four houses. We got four houses that are like two of the houses are like four or five places of houses apart. And uh it should be it should be a good time. So there's there's twenty seven guys going on to, on that trip, which will be a lot of fun. And then we're gonna follow that up in April with uh, a women's team. So it'll be the Gunettes. The Gunettes will hit the ice. So there's uh That's cool. There's a new Gunettes 
new Gunette shirt coming out shortly. I'll make sure you uh, get one or see one first. Um, and then uh, we're going to wrap it up with our um, our GM. So what we do for our summit every year is we try to we try to take last year's was COVID stopped. We couldn't do it. We did it all virtual um, by Zoom. So this year we're going to go down. We're going to meet up with Drew McMillan and uh, the boys down in Otago and uh, hopefully arrange doing an outdoor rink series where we play oh. them four or five times and, and try to get Techpo get Techpo and Alexandria and maybe even Naseby in on it. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's fun. It's it, as I get older, I know I can't play in the BHL forever. It's getting too quick and I, and I'm too fat. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. So I'm, I, uh, as long as I still fit in a plane seat, I might, uh, I might jump on a plane here and there. Nice, man. I like that. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, yeah, Drew McMillan and, uh, the guys down there in Otago do an amazing job. Like, like you and the boys uh, and the girls do in Auckland as well. Um, you speak of the speed and the like, the talent that's starting to that is on offer in your league. Um, <laughs> a big one. We just we have to we have to talk about it. You have Jake Ratcliffe in the league. Uh, he had a massive season playing NCAA college hockey. Uh, of course, COVID. Yeah, you know they probably. Uh, I don't know the full story there yet, but I imagine that's probably stopped him going back. Uh, he had a rookie of the year season uh, in the AIHL with the Sydney Bears, helped them win a good old cup in 2019, which feels like forever ago. I was at a bunch of those Bears games. And uh, I mean, I was there to commentate and, you know, I was watching Jake and I was just like, man, even in this league, he, it sometimes he looked like he was too good. And, <laughs> You know, they, they don't say that about a lot of Kiwi players in Australia um, because obviously Kiwi players don't count as imports in the Aussie League. So they have to be really good um, to take a spot from, say, an Australian player. So, of course, in the Sydney Bears, you have him. You got uh, old mate Aston Brooks, the backup goalie. Of course, everyone from Queenstown know, love him and know him very well. Um and now he's tearing it up in the BHL. How many points has he had? Oh, uh, I think he's got, he had 41 before the other game. And it, that's in eight games. And then I think he got, I think he got a Hattie and, a, and an Apple the other night. So he's, sit, he's sitting about 45 points through nine games. And uh, you know what? I, I have known Jake for a while. He wouldn't remember me. I remember him when he was a, a lot younger when I first moved here and I met his dad and, uh, and I never really got to know him a ton, but I knew him from being around the admirals and I, and, and I knew he had success elsewhere. And, um, I only remember seeing him for about a handful of games before he left mm -hmm. with the admirals. I knew he was slick. I knew he had, I knew he could skate, but right now I'm playing on a line with him and he's not even trying. <laughs> he's not even trying. Like I, I, I'm playing on a line with him. He'll our goalie will make a save. He'll come around, throw it off the boards. I'll be standing on the half boards in the offensive zone. I will flub a pass to go to cross ice to somebody else. It'll go off a skate. Jake will pick it up at the dot in our own zone, take three strides, and have already went all the way through the neutral zone, through their <laughs> zone, curled around the net, and now I've taken about 157 strides, and I'm damn near dead, and then he'll feed me a pass as I come across the blue line without even looking at me. So it's it, it's it's tough, man. you got to keep your stick on the ice when you're on a, on, on with a player like that. And uh, he is he is something else. And and on top of that, like we have Dagsy on the back end, so it's the two of those two are magic because Dagsy's only played twenty five games or only played five games, and he's got twenty five points. So between the two of them, they're both averaging five points a game, which is retarded. Yeah, like, I, in I, any <laughs> league, I just had to bust out the calculator for that. I was like, man, he's averaging just over five points a game, which yeah is wild. Uh, I mean, well, skill level is is a bit different, but it's, it just shows where he's at as a player. So. Yeah, and to put it into perspective, so in 2015, Richie Hopkinson at the time, and at that time, I think he was he wasn't even in the NZIHL yet because he was still pretty young, mm. but uh, he was skating circles around us old farts, and uh, and he put up 61 points in 15 games. So he set he set he has the record. 
right now. And Jake's 16 points away with seven games to go or six games to go. <laughs> so it, it'll be interesting. But I, I'm thinking like he's on pace right now to get like 80 points. It's insane. Yeah. But uh, he's a fun player to watch. And and like this year, so this year was a new wrinkle because like COVID kind of shut us down in a, in a certain way as, as it shut down everything. And, and it really killed our recruiting process because mm. our recruiting process for the BHL is usually when the free agency opens at the beginning of the year, we have about eight scrimmages where you can come out and some of the GMs will come down and they'll skate with you. They get to know everybody before the draft. Um, we didn't really get to do that. We were actually sitting there two days away like this, waiting to go to level two from Jacinda. And then she said that it would go to level two on the th Wednesday morning or the Thursday morning. And our draft was scheduled for Friday. We kept it on just like crossing our fingers, <laughs> hoping it would happen. And it did. Yeah. Um, but because of that, we were 12 guys short or sorry, we were 16 guys short going into the draft. Mm. Or, or eight guys short sorry we we're eight guys short going into the dr draft so we said all right we're going to do a wild card for the last round so you can recruit anybody you want under the sun <laughs> anybody you want under the sun you can recruit them and and so it went out and there was feelers and then all of a sudden nick henderson got added to the mooseheads the puck yeah team yeah, and yeah. Then, <laughs> so nick hendo he got picked up then I was very happy when I heard that. I I'm a, always been a big fan of Nick Henderson. <laughs> yeah, and then you had the and then you had um, the NZIHL uh, assistant coach for the Swarm, Colin Van Devin. So he got picked up, and then all of a sudden J Jacques Prinzelou from the under twenty team he gets picked up, and it's like oh my god, this is like gone haywire. Like I was thinking it would be like your buddy, but no. And then all of a sudden Andy <laughs> Hay calls me up. He's like, hey, we got a guy. He's been playing over in Europe. I'm like, what? So then this guy shows up. <laughs> and I'm like, holy cow, my mind's exploding. And then I go to I go to Dagsy. I'm like, well, we need to get somebody. He's like, well, I don't know. Jake's still here. Maybe ask Jake. So I asked Jake. <laughs> and then Jake's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, no problem. And Jake's the most chill, relaxed guy. He's so humble. Yeah. He's he's a sweetheart of a dude. And like me, me and him have probably been – we're one of the couple guys that have played every game this year. And we and the the chats uh, – he's just the most humble dude in the world, but he's ridiculous. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jake is the product of good parents. Um, oh, his yeah, parents absolutely. freaking awesome. Um, so you definitely see that there. Like I say, he is so humble, but he has every right to not be humble. But, yeah, he, he's just a good Kiwi dude. Um, not the only one, though. Uh, I saw a very cool thing on uh, your website, which you can <laughs> see there on your uh, beanie there, nzbhl.com, if you guys want to go check that out. You had all three Harrisons in one game. That's Grace Harrison, which, of course, people know from the Ice Ferns uh, and her time in the NCAA with St. Lawrence Saints. Uh, you're Sean Harrison, people know from the Ice Blacks and the uh, West Auckland Admirals. And then you've got Tommy Harrison as well. Like, how, like, what yeah, happened? He's, a, he's just a long haired stepbrother. That's what yeah. he is. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what happened for that to go down? And was there like any moments out there that just, that would have made Christmas completely awkward in that household? Uh, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. It was a, so usually like what'll happen is if a goal, if a goaltender can't make it or something, I'll, I'll get a call from somebody and we'll, we'll have to make sure we got a goalie for that night. And, uh, we saw that it was, it was Sean, it was the seals against, um, the pylons, which meant it was Sean against Tommy. And, uh, somebody mentioned grace and grace is like, yeah, I want to play for sure. I want to play. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, so she picked the brother that she wanted to go with. She picked the brother that she wanted to go with. And then uh, actually in between the, the second period and the third period, Grace come up to me. She said, uh, I want to get a picture with my mom on the ice, but you got to make sure that um, she shotguns a Dobro before she comes. <laughs> so, so, so that's how it ended up happening. We made sure mom got her photo because uh, the and because mom wanted the photo but wouldn't come on the ice and the and the kids said, you know, for ransom, if you want this photo, then you got to shotgun a Dobro. <laughs> So we made sure that that happened, and uh, and that's that's probably if anything that they're talking about on the tree was Mama Shotgun and Dobro. So, <laughs> but uh, to have to have people to have people like like the Harrisons, like in full families um, playing, that, that kind of breeds to exactly what we're all about. 
yeah. we're just one big happy family and like actually now that i'm saying that uh i i want to give a shout out to um alex hefford and uh danny hefford who just got married on the weekend and i've known alex and and lachlan the twins f- for years and and the hockey house has always helped to support them when they're when they're going on the trips with the ferns and and there's a very close relationship there so uh congratulations to you guys and uh I'll raise a puck bunny to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, I saw on Alex's Instagram that they got married uh, at the same venue that Sarah and I got married at as well. Mark oh, Vita. Nice. Perfect spot. Perfect which spot is, for which a wedding. Which is a beautiful spot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that place has done well at a New Zealand hockey. I'll say that. Um, I think there's, uh, from memory, I want to say Andy Hay also got married there. Oh, really? I want to say that. Um, I can't remember if that that's true or not, but yeah, awesome. Um, shout out to you, Alex. You actually beat me to it. I, for this podcast, we had noted down later, um, because she's not the only ice fern that recently got married. Will said Jasmine Horner Pasco. Uh, so shout out to her as well. Um, yeah. So in the family, you've also got, I saw you've got Kennedy's up there now. Like you're just bringing some serious firepower to this league, man. Dude, it's fun. It's fun, and and that's what the boys are telling me. The boys, the boys are telling me that they're having some of the most fun. And actually, it's it's the wags, it's the wags that are coming up to me and saying, you know what, he's having so much fun playing in the league because the boys ain't gonna tell me. <laughs> but uh, but no, it, it, and that's another that's another scenario. There's X amount of roster spots on each team, so um, at the end of the day, um, referrals take precedent over anything else. Um, and one thing that we try to do to keep the parity of the league and keep it competitive is make sure that, um, when a guy leaves, um, that we're replacing him with somebody who's, um, just, just as good or, or, or a high quality player or, or whatever level that player is. We want to make sure that you're trying to get as close to like for like as you can when somebody leaves. Um, and actually, it was um, Danica Phillips who was actually chosen in the in this spot. Who was um, never met her, but she came again by a referral from uh, Steve Braddy, who played in the league before, and um, and she's coming to New. She was coming to New Zealand. Her her um, admission into the country was stopped by COVID, and um, so we had to had to replace somebody. And then um, Rusty Black, who's taken over leadership for the Suns, he gave me a call and he's like you know, there's Taylor's brother, like, can we, can we take him? And I was like, all right, well, let's see how it goes. And then, and then sure enough, it just worked out that way. And now we got them reunited and, uh, and that should be really interesting and it, and it will be good for the parody of the league. Um, there's a couple other, we got a couple of U20s on the burner too, that'll probably make an entry, um, shortly over the next couple of days that have, um, Kennedy ties. Um, <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, so the, at the end of the day, we're just trying to keep parity across the league. And, um, if you got Jake Ratcliffe and Justin Dagg on one team, you got, you got to spice up all the others to, to kind yeah. of compete. Yeah. A hundred percent. So with the whole idea of that wild card, how do you think that went in the end for you? Man, it was unreal. Like yeah. I, I never expected the, uh, the level of talent that, that came in. And that's not to say that the talent that, uh, is already there. Um, mm. is diminished by it in any way, but it definitely added a, an interesting wrinkle because it put um, it put the it put the onus a little bit on the GMs to go out and you know get that try, guy or girl, yeah, 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 get get a chance and and the whole I call it a recruitment process, but it's it's never really been a recruitment process. It's just getting to know each other, right? You want to make sure that you're surrounded by um, good guys that you're going to have a good Thursday night with, and um, and and at the end of the day, it, it it was it's pretty unreal to see the level of talent that we have in the league right now. Like I think th- I think the last time I checked in that showdown series that they had, I believe there was thirty one guys that had either played or are currently playing in the league. Um, so that's a testament to those guys too for for keeping fit and stuff for their ends at IHL season. And like I said, for them, it's just a break. It's one night a week, it's very low commitment, and it's um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, hundred percent. But I mean, I think any ice time is good ice time, whether it's you know sort of casual like that, or or you know more competitive side of things. But I think that's a good thing with the uh, BHL and the FHL is that it gives uh, you know the say the ice blacks and the ice ferns 
I mean, they one thing that we talked about with uh, Andy Mills earlier in the podcast is just how affected and disruptive um, you know, COVID has been to our uh, national teams. Uh, you know, the Ice Ferns got lucky. Uh, they were able to play in Iceland um, and then they had a NZW season again. But outside of that, I mean, they're not going to have a tournament this year. The Ice Blacks missed out two years in a row, which like, I really feel for those dudes. Same with the under 20s and under 18s. Um, so the fact that something like the BHL and the FHL is out there to sort of help um, you know, give those players some some ice time. And it's still, I would say, still quality ice time because you have good players out there. You know, it might be dialed down a little bit, but it will still help, I guess, with the chemistry and everything. So, um, dude, honestly, keep doing what you're doing. Pakia absolutely loves the hockey house. And, you know, thanks again for coming on. And thank you for sending me a freaking six pack of Puck Bunny Pilsners. <laughs> From your place to my place in hey, Sydney, man. dude. No Love problem, it. man. Anytime. It's always it's always good to have a chat with you, buddy. So the one thing that I really took away from uh, Cam's interview there is just, I mean, the pride there and what everyone does. Uh, it's such a great community of hockey players, uh, fans, lovers of the game. You're part of it, Joe. With those hockey house leagues, what makes it such a good like training ground for players? Um, I guess the main thing is it's kind of it's on the onus of everyone in the community to to make sure everything happens. Um, the players are the referees. Um, they run the they basically run the league. It's all the players in a committee running the league. It's not people who have kind of just been brought in as a as an old boys network to kind of run things um so all the, everyone has a a tangible piece of control of how things run um like you've got players who have to be taught how to referee because it's we we're not paying people to ref in the league mm. so i've been i've done a a game which was terrifying but um aaron aaron somerville helped me through it um did you did you have any um any blowouts there any bad calls no i was just running i was the linesman so all i had to do was kind of call the offsides the icings and drop the puck and get the hell out of the way um did you try and do was, did you where's mccauley it or you... i did not i did not it was more just apologizing to the guys for not dropping the puck flat it was the main thing um but no, it's really good and like, it's, there's a, it's really hard to explain, but everyone is very proud of the product and the, and the community that they've built. Mm. Um, there's no dicks, there's no animosity within it and everyone's kind of in it together. Um, so I'm really proud to be a part of it um, and it's only growing and growing and growing. It's going to be probably in the next five years, probably one of the most diverse and key sporting communities i think in new zealand if cam has anything to do with it and i know he's got a lot of big plans so big stay plans. tuned yes uh i would love to see that if this is how hockey grows in new zealand or is a key part of it um i think that's just testament to everyone that's involved like you said everyone's kind of responsible for their for their own thing for their own actions and together it's all done for the for the greater good so thanks again for listening guys we'll be back next week um can't wait to spend some more time with you see ya see ya